It's going to be true in every editorial tool. You're going to have splicing, you're going to have overwrite, you have trim tools. Some things you embrace right away, some things you don't know they're there, some things you don't know are a pain point. And we're going to cover about eight great things and about three things that I just want to warn you about inside of Resolve. And I'm going to just give you an idea of what we're doing. Eight amazing cool things, three little speed bumps. Um, the first thing I want to mention is it's really free. The $299 does amazingly more, but I do know some people, I know quite a number of people, who use the free version of Resolve. And why you want to edit in it is because you can take your Final Cut, your Avid, your Premiere keyboard and go. I use the Resolve keyboard, but it's this color tool set that we all live and breathe and die for because there's a zero conform. You can just switch back and forth, and now you can switch back and forth from uh, Fairlight. I don't even know how, the, I haven't even seen the new 15 version, but all the stuff I'm talking about applies still. It's tracks, conventional interface, zero conform. I'm not gonna talk about the color set, I'm not talking about Fairlight. Did I mention the amazing color tools? Just wanna make sure I did. Eight cool things. I've got an interview clip here, and right underneath this little switch, this little tiny switch, it says, show full clip audio waveforms and zoomed audio waveforms. Let's do full clip audio waveforms. Let me clear my ins and outs. And I'd like you to see here, as it's playing, you can see, we're not gonna hear it, but you can see what he's saying. And this is what a dream come true for me as an editor, that I don't have to switch back and forth between the interview and the waveform to be able to see what I'm hearing, if you will. We can make our system live save. This is a preference here. So I'm gonna go ahead, and you should know Mac or PC, Resolve looks the same. They actually have the preferences underneath a DaVinci Resolve menu. I'm gonna go here to my preferences under user, and there's the words auto save, and now it's live. You'll see it says edit it up here. I'm gonna hit save. I'm gonna hit a Command S save or a Control S on the PC, it goes away. And now Resolve is live saving as we work. So if it crashes, it's going to lose the last step. You've got crazy, crazy powerful smart bins. Metadata is the key to life. You right now probably are using a lot of bins and just dragging clips around. If I give this a keyword, a little bit of information, it will auto build bins for me. I've already got that set here in the bottom left. They're called smart bins. I've got one here set for interviews and one set for B-roll. I'm gonna open up one. You can see I've got some interview clips that don't belong there. We'll fix those in a second. I'm gonna right click on the word interviews, and I'm gonna say edit smart bin. And it's saying here, any clip that has a keyword that contains the word interview automatically ends up in this bin. So I'm gonna go ahead here and grab these four clips and look at their metadata. I need to look for a specific type. It's called shot and scene. And I'm just gonna scroll right here where it says keywords. I'm gonna start typing in the word interview, I-N-T. Hey, it's typing that in for me, click. They now have all the word interview when I hit the word save. Just as a little caveat, when you're working in Resolve and you've got multiple elements selected, a save button will show up. You need to click it in the metadata panel for you to save that metadata. I'm gonna hit save. Now, the clips disappeared because this bin says, if it's got the word interview, don't go here. And now they're there automatically. And that's the power of metadata. The least sexy thing becomes such an important thing for organization in professional post-production. We can sync multi-clips at once. And you'll notice I got a little thing there that says, seriously? Yeah. I'm going to do this a little differently than I normally work. I've got a sync bin here. I've got four clips. I've got three pieces of audio. And I'm going to let Resolve figure it out all at once. Somebody's gonna cry because of this. It's my favorite thing, is to show you something so cool that makes you cry. I'm gonna lasso all of these clips. I'm going to right click, and I'm going to choose here, auto sync based on waveform. Now, if I did it just based on waveform, I couldn't show you the difference. We wouldn't be able to hear the difference, and I don't have the audio plugged in. I don't think you'll see the difference in the waveforms if I tell it to sync and append those tracks. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. It's gonna sync, here we go. And what it's doing is it's looking at the waveforms like a lot of other tools do, but I'm doing multiple clips at once. And when it's done here, I'm gonna tell this, tell Resolve to make a timeline of these four clips. So I'm just gonna right click here and say a new timeline. 
New timeline using selected clips. I'm going to call this sync example. I'm going to say OK. Now, there are the clips on the timeline. Let's make our timeline area just a little bit larger so you can see this a little bit bigger. I don't need the project for a second, so I'm going to hide the media pool. And you can see right away that there's a difference between the two waveforms. This is the clean audio that I grabbed. This, I'm sorry, this was the camera sound. This was the clean audio. And I could mute these and turn these off. Remember, I said append the tracks. Normally, you wouldn't do that. It would just do it for you automatically. And it did it for four clips even though there was only three pieces of audio because it could see how those audios overlap correctly. It's, isn't that crazy cool? You can also do an edit on top in Resolve. If you don't remember, there was a tool that we were all using that had edit on top. It was called Overlay. I could take uh, my friend's interview here. Let's come back to our media pool. Let's go to our effect library. Let me actually get rid of the media pool here for a second. There we go. Go to generators. I want to put a sorry, title, I want to put a piece of text or a lower third on top of him. And so all I'm going to do is just zoom in a little bit. That's control or command plus, control on the PC, command plus. I'm going to mark it with X marks the spot. And in doing so, it's uh, ready for my edit. And I'm going to grab this lower third. Let's take this one, drag it right here. I'm going to put it on top. One, two, three, done. My text is on top ready to be tight, set up for a lower third. I didn't have to drag it and massage its edges. I was able to put it exactly where I wanted it. That's what really good editing is. Allows you to be fast and confident about what you're doing. Something I've never seen any other editor have is called Ripple Overwrite. It's a four point edit that replaces two shots of two different lengths. Let's take a look. I'm gonna switch timelines here. And uh, I'm going to take this first interview clip. I'm going to mark it with an X to mark the spot. There we go. I'm going to take uh, one of his shots. Right now, the in and out of this interview clip is 14 seconds. And uh, the in and out I have set here is, let's make it a little bit shorter. Let's go in and out here. It is nine seconds. I have one, two, three, four points. And the way you could do this is you could extract everything and then push everything back in. I'm going to go here and resolve. I'm going to drag this over. I'm going to say ripple over, right? One, two, three. And it pulled the timeline back. Now, it, it also did some damage here, and I could fix that after the fact. But it's just this idea that I could swap so quickly different length clips, not a replace, a ripple uh, a ripple over eight. And where I find myself using this, particularly is in my initial string outs of narrative work, when I'm trying to take somebody's longer performance and swap it with their shorter performance, or an entirely different performance. It also works great in this situation. But if you have a fairly built up timeline, it's a little too late for you to want to use this. Take selector. Take selector, you may have seen in other tools, a sort of a ability for you to pick different shots, but Resolve has the ability to also make it ripple the timeline. The little switch up here allows you to say, ripple the lengths or not. I want you to see how will the speed changes work in Resolve. I think this may have one of the easiest engines for this, and then there's something special that happens. So I have this shot here of a plane. I'm going to go ahead and hit a control R or a command R on a Macintosh to bring up the retime controls. And let's do a command plus here or a control plus, get a little bit closer. I'd like to change the length of this shot. So when I go ahead and I drag this shot right now, I'm trimming the shot. If I do it at the top, though, I'm changing the speed. Do you see the speed changing right down there? Resolve's trim mode is very, very robust and I can jump in the trim mode with the letter T. It's this button right here. When I turn on trim mode, I can actually grab this, trim and change speed at the same time. So this is great when you know you want it to be shorter and you need the timeline to close. You have the ability to not have to be reliant on closing it, closing the gap, playing around. You're able to use the trim mode and the difference is the letter T, whether you're grabbing up high or you're grabbing down low and trimming the clip itself. Three things I want to warn you about coming to Resolve. There are just some speed bumps, and I'm trying to do the responsible thing as a teacher and just make you aware of them. The first is the file names are default in a list view. 
you have to enable display names to rename a clip. And this feels frustrating if you're used to editing, if you're used to that idea that you can just go in and change the name of your clips. You need to know that Resolve isn't like that by default. So I'm gonna go to my B-roll bin here, and I'm gonna change it to a list view, and I can't change these names because they are file names. Do you see right at the top there it says file names? Right at where it says file names, I'm going to right click, I'm going to say display name, and I'm going to uncheck file name. And when I do so, this now says display names, and now I can click and call them anything I want. This is a much smarter way to work as a, somebody who does a lot of organization as an editor, but you understand the heritage of Resolve is Resolve was first a color tool, no colorist in the world changes their audio, changes their clip names. Number two, databases, not project files. Resolve is not using what you're conventionally used to, a file somewhere on your file system that you go and you grab and you can take with you. It is a database. I need to show you two things, how to export the database if you wanted to give it to somebody else. I need to show you how to back up your database. So the back up your database from our front window, our project manager, our home, we've got a little switch, we turn it on and we say back up the database. Let me show you that. Here I am in Resolve, there's a little home in the bottom right corner. This is also under the file menu, it's called the project manager. And under the project manager, right here's this little switch. This switch brings me my database and this first choice here backs up my database. And I would recommend that you back up on a daily basis out to some cloud given architecture. And if something were to ever go wrong with your system, because you have a backup of your media, now you have a backup of all of your projects that are live in Resolve. To back up a specific project by itself, I can right click a project and I can say export or import, and what I'm exporting is a snapshot of that project. It's a DRP, a DaVinci Resolve project. But there's also a brilliant piece here called Archive. And what does Archive do? Archive goes and it actually copies your project and all your media to a given spot and Restore will bring it back. The very last thing I need to do here is everything gets conformed. There is a single frame rate per project. If you're used to in a tool having five different frame rates, five different frame sizes, Resolve can have multiple frame sizes, but it only gets one frame rate per project. It's a finishing system. You can have other projects if you needed to conform like that at different speeds. I'm the chair of the Editor's Retreat. It's a conference for editors, by editors. It's a boutique conference. We have two keynotes this year. Norm Holland, who's a professor at USC Film School. He's an editor of Heather's, Cotton Club, Wild Palms. For the last two decades, this man has been more involved with more film editors than probably any other educator. We have Kevin Ross, who cut uh, bulk of the first two se uh, seasons of Stranger Things. Super nice people. We mingle with them. They hang out with us. They play poker with us. They drink with us. The conversations inside the rooms are almost as good as the networking and conversations on the outside. This is my baby. You can find out more about it at editorsretreat.com. You get a free pass to the $1,500 worth of training of post-production world here at NAB for next year and a goodie bag that's worth about the entire event itself. My name is Jeff Greenberg. I am at Jeff Greenberg Consult J Greenberg Consulting. I'm Film Geek on Twitter. I can absolutely come out and teach your people. My materials are on Linda. This has been Tips for Editors Switching to Resolve. Thank you so much. <laughs>